The 2024 NBA season is here and we've already seen some monster performances, overtime finishes, and upsets down to the wire. As I mentioned in my previous video, this NBA season has the chance to be one of the greatest we've ever seen. In today's video, we're going to discuss four must-watch NBA players for the season and discuss why I think they're worth your precious time. I have to also ask if you're new here to consider using your precious time to subscribe. Now that the NBA is back, we're officially on the road to 4,000 subscribers and we are uploading almost daily both long and short form videos. Without further ado, let's waste no more time, get straight to the first guy on this list, James Harden. Every single season for James since 2018 has been polarizing, confusing, and just flat out interesting. Some seasons he's overweight, some seasons he's a skeleton, some seasons he wants to sit out. But this year, prior to the regular season, James was quoted saying, start of this season, I'm gonna probably, not probably, the best shape I've been in in five, six, seven years. I don't really wanna talk about it, I just wanna go out there and shoot show it. If you're a Clippers fan, this is something that would inspire you to have hope for this season. A quote like this following the devastating loss of Kawhi Leonard being out indefinitely means business for James Harden. In the home opener in their new arena, they narrowly lost in overtime to the big three Phoenix Suns after James missed a big time free throw and Kevin hit an insane shot to send them into overtime. But as James found his rhythm in this game as he did have a slow start, he had a monster ending. James recorded 29 points, 12 rebounds, and 8 assists. Now, just because these stats are impressive does not mean he or this game was perfect. James shot two for nine from the three-point land and then turned the ball over eight times. But as I said, A, this was a slow start, and B, this is all the more reason to watch and pay close attention to the Clippers. As fans, it's very fun to watch the guys work through their growing pains, adjust to this new roster, and adjust to the brand new stadium that they just built. I know I'm gonna have a lot of fun watching the wall, and I'm sure somebody out there is gonna chart every single miss from from every single free throw attempt from every single shot at the wall. If you guys don't know what the wall is in the new Clippers arena, they have a, a portion behind the hoops where only Clippers fans can sit there. And it gets pretty crazy when the opposing teams are taking their free throws. In my opinion, guys like Avicii Zubac and Derek Jones Jr. will excel in a system where James is the primary ball handler. Such lob threats, such great screen and roll guys. I've seen many different lists as to where the Clippers will place in the standings this year. I've seen some as low as 13. I've seen some as high as seven. It's our jobs as fans to watch and figure it out because I can promise you if, if, this is a big if, if James stays healthy, I know he can drag this team to at least the play-in until Kawhi comes back because we've seen James do a lot more with a lot less in the past. The next player who is must-see TV, LaMelo Ball. Now, the last few years, we've seen this story. The season starts, Hornets collect some nice wins, LaMelo Ball plays out of his mind, making Eric Collins freak out, and then he sprains his ankle or hurts his foot, and then he's out for the year. If, this is a big if, if this was the year that he stayed healthy, you'd be very sorry at home if you didn't tune in and watch at least five Hornets games this year. LaMelo Ball is electric when he's on the court, which is very funny to me because he has such a lackadaisical play style. Anything from his jumper to the way he dribbles the ball, it feels like he doesn't even care. He just knows that he's great at basketball. And this is very, very interesting when you turn it right back on its head because you realize he has a lackadaisical play style, but his play style at the same time has so much flair. There's no telling what LaMelo will do and when he's going to do it. And in the first game of the season, they defeated the Houston Rockets on the road in what was a huge upset according to the books. LaMelo Ball dropped 34 points, 11 assists, 8 rebounds, 1 block, 1 steal, and most importantly, a win. He also only recorded 2 turnovers and shot 50% from the field and 40% from downtown. The Ball brothers have had a feeling or a stigma, if you will, surrounding their name for nearly 10 years, which yes, 10 years is crazy. In 2016, 2015, they started getting popping. Now we're here in 2024 how the time flies. However, if you don't enjoy them off the court, I implore you to watch them on the court because Alonzo and LaMelo, even LiAngelo, all these guys are super fun to watch. And just as I encourage you to watch the Ball Brothers, I encourage you all to take some time out of your year and pay attention to Evan Mobley this season. Prior to the season, new head coach Kenny Atkinson said that Evan Mobley will have the ball in his hands a lot more. And last night shows it's for good reason. An opening night during a road game against the Toronto Raptors, 
Evan was scoring with ease, blocking shots with tenacity, and getting up and down the court with no effort. He looks to be in fantastic shape, which you absolutely love to see out of your bigs, especially when they put on a little bit of muscle. We see guys like Victor Wembanyama, Evan Mobley, Chet Holmgren, they put on muscle, maybe they're a little slower. When they're not, it makes you feel fantastic as a GM and as a fan. In addition to his shape, Kenny is also a phenomenal mind for basketball who has a lot of success with a lot less talented roster, so it's a simple equation. In shape, young superstar, great basketball mind equals wins for the most part. The Cavs were just moving very precisely last night. I understand it's against a rebuilding team like the Toronto Raptors, but a big thing when you want to be champions is handling the light work. You're supposed to beat the little guys when you're asked to. This is a very important step of being champions kind of treating every game like it's game seven, every game like it's the Super Bowl. You want to avoid as many chinks in the armor as you can, and it's something that I think the Cavs will be able to continue to do if Evan Mobley is able to dominate that paint. You know Evan's having a dominant game when a guy like Jared Allen is the one who's looking small. One of my biggest gripes watching Cleveland basketball last year was while JB was still coaching, there was never a time where it seemed he felt comfortable saying here, Evan, take the ball 10 feet from the hoop and go to work. I understand Evan isn't what you would call a built guy, but the kid is very, very special and has a ton of finesse and touch around the rim. He is oddly also very tenacious down low when it comes to punishing people at the rim, both on offense and on defense, in and out of the pick and roll. Watch him, don't watch him. To me, it doesn't matter, but if you don't, you might regret it. And last but definitely not least, we have not a player, but a group of players, and they go by the... This year, guys, Franz and Paolo look to learn from their Game 7 loss versus the Cleveland Cavaliers and prevail. Now, what does that mean exactly? I am not sure, but I know that they have a fantastic head coach in Jamal Mosley, a newly added 3 and D 2 guard who has won two NBA championships and been a part of multiple deep playoff runs, which is exactly what they needed in KCP. And they have a forward duo that can compete with the best of them. Paolo Bencaro is special. There's no really other way to say it. He rebounds better than most of the dudes at his own position he's an excellent shooter from beyond 18 feet he's strong enough to make matchups difficult for opposing coaches and as a young man he's an excellent leader i mean for pete's sakes he's 21 years old and the Orlando magic have such a fun and young team that for the next five to ten years we're going to be saying that they're must watch basketball if they can retain this core like let's put something into perspective in 10 years the guys like steph lebron kevin these guys are going to be 51, they're going to be 47, and they're going to be 46 years old. In 10 years, Paolo Bencaro is going to be 31 years old, just barely reaching, you know, the cup, the two years after his prime. And he's this talented. He's almost a 25 and 10 guy, and he's 21 years old. They've got a lot of decisions to make in the future regarding um, what a consistent backcourt looks like, but Suggs is locked in. KCP brings a lot of pressure to defense with Suggs, and they're both great shooters. So at this point, it just seems like they got to pick a point guard and stick with it. It's very hard because they just have so many different guys. They have Kel, they have Anthony, uh, you have Gary still off the bench, even though he's more of a two-yard guy. It's going to be interesting to see what the Orlando Magic do, but what do you guys think? Out of these four players and or teams, who do you think you're going to spend the most time watching? Let me know in the comments below. If you made it this far, you know I appreciate your support as always. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. Stay happy, health, and blessed. Peace.